For today's challenge, I will be attempting to make bulletproof armor using only one tin can and some junk mail flyers. Okay, I've got the paper sandwiched in the tin can. Now it's time to go to the forge. Okay, as you can see, I've decided to attach another tin can here simply because I had so much length on the, uh, on the paper. But as you can see, the tin cans are positioned adjacent to each other, so I don't have one tin can reinforcing the other. It's forge time with rubber meal needle. Time for the heat treat. And now for the quench. All right, looks pretty good. And looks pretty straight. I'm happy. Here is my completed piece of armor. All that's left is to go to the range and do the keel test. Here we are at the secret mystery wheel gunner testing facility. Here is my homemade body armor and the high-tech target carrier. For the purpose of this test, we will assume that a complete pass-through equals a lethal hit. I'll start the testing with some 22 ammo. I'll be shooting at a distance of 15 feet, and the test gun will be a Smith & Wesson 617 with a 4-inch barrel. First up is 22 Long CB from CCI. Advertised muzzle velocity is 710 feet per second with a 29-grain bullet. Now, I don't know what barrel length they used to get this feet per second rating, but it's obvious that, that this is a very low powered loading. That being said, this is not some toy ammo. This is still lethal. All right, on with the test. Okay, here's the result of that first hit. Bullet didn't go too far and no pass through. Next up is CCI Standard Velocity 22 Long Rifle with an advertised velocity of 1,070 feet per second with a 40 grain bullet. So we've got a pretty substantial increase in firepower. And check it out. It's the 2015 Christmas Edition ammo. Yeah, getting fancy on this channel. Okay, there's the first hit from the CB, there's the second hit from the standard velocity, and no pass through. Time for some CCI Mini Mag. Advertised muzzle velocity 1,235 feet per second with a 40 grain bullet. Now, these are still 22 long rifle, but these are substantially more powerful than the standard velocity. Okay, so why did I shoot three times with Mini Mag? Well, the first shot went kind of high. Still a good hit, but I wanted one a little bit lower. Well, second shot was lower, but really close to the CB hit, and I thought that would affect the result. So for the third shot, I played it safe and went far below the others. Anyways, all three Mini Mag hits resulted in a complete pass-through. So what have we learned? Well, one, don't try to make your own body armor at home using just tin cans and junk mail. Number two, don't buy body armor made by me. If you need body armor for whatever reason, buy body armor made by the professionals. Okay, let's take a look at the back of the armor in case you want to see what that looked like after taking all the hits. There it is. So the first hit was 
here. I know there's two hits real close to each other, but the, the hit from the CB didn't deform the back of the, uh, the armor at all. Hard to tell now because the, the mini mag hit is so close to it. The second hit from the standard velocity did put a bulge in the, uh, the back of the armor. And of course, the mini mags, one, two, and three, all three hits passed right through. As you can see, the first two hits were right on the seam of the tin can. But that really didn't make a difference at all. You know, some people might say, oh, of course, you got passed through because it hit on the seam. You can see right here, it actually tar tarted. It actually started to tear at the seam. But if you look at the third hit, no hit on the seam on the back, no hit on the seam in front, and uh, we still got complete pass-through. Anyways, if you liked what you've just seen, give me a like, give me a subscribe, share the video with your friends. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.